All right. I'm gonna have to move here. I know your kitty is so sweet. Love it. Everyone loves you, George. Hand him off to my wife. Well, I'm excited uh, you get to play this burn deck then. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, is this a good distance for spell table to work? Yeah, I think it looks great. Okay. Um, and we are live, so is there anything that you would like to say to introduce yourself to the stream? Um, hello, peoples. Um, my Twitter handle is Gavity Trading Post. Um, I just, every now and then, for funsies, sell cards on eBay. I've been playing Magic since middle school, way, way, way back in the mid-90s. Um, didn't get in early enough for any of the cool stuff. And uh, just just like Magic, it's fun, like all the rest of us. I'll say hi. Hello, awesome. Um, and then I just got a raid from uh, Adrioxus while we were, while you were doing that little intro. So thank you so much for sharing your community with me. We're just Woo! about to hop into our first legacy game of the evening. Yeah. Um, do you want, do you have any dice nearby? Do you want to high I roll to see who goes first? Too many dice. <laughs> Perfect. I've got like two D sixes nearby. If that's good. I, I, I play Magic D <laughs> and uh, and forty K. So I have dice literally everywhere. Awesome. <laughs> All right, I rolled a ten. Two D sixes. Yeah. All right. Uh, eight. Okay, I guess I'll go first then. All right, sounds good. Good Just luck. Just doing a little stuff. Good luck. Yeah. Wow. You know, last in person event I got to do was uh, uh, Journey and then Net. No, um, when we went back. Oh, my brain just went. When we went back to. Um, oh my god, my brain just went. Uh, Greek themed set. That was fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, Theros. Yes, Theros Beyond Death. Uh, that was the last time I played in person. Okay, and yeah. That was like right before everything happened with, with COVID. And then, um, yeah. <laughs> then it was just playing a bit of arena here and there. And spending a lot of money on cards I never got to play. <laughs> nice. All right. Let's see. Seven. All, All right. right. So welcome to the Legacy Lounge. I love hosting Legacy on my channel because it is the most fabulous wow. format in all of Magic the Gathering. So thank you it so much really for fun. being here tonight, Gavini Trading Post. Thank you for sharing and thank you for hosting and having me here. This is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> so fun and we haven't even cast any spells yet. I know. <laughs> okay, I like my hand, I'll keep. Uh, I'm also gonna keep. Okay, and for any viewers who are new, don't worry, I'll walk you through what's going on in case you are not familiar with the Legacy format. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a turn one creeping tar pit. It enters the battlefield tapped. It's one of the old man lands from World Wake. Uh, so I can turn it into a 3-2 unblockable creature by paying three mana. Oh, I haven't Pastor. seen one of those in a long time. Yeah, and it got reprinted in Ultimate Masters, which is kind of cool. I got the old school World Wake one. Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm tapped. I'm nothing on tap. Upkeep. Nothing upkeep. I'm gonna draw. Uh, I'm gonna be very exciting. Play a mountain because you know burn decks play mountains. Uh, every mountain in this deck is an unglued. Nice. I love that. <laughs> uh, and then. That's called style. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pay one. Red, and I'm going to suspend uh, Rift Bolt. Okay. Some people might be familiar with Suspend uh, from uh, the Time Spiral Remastered set that got printed in paper last year. Suspend is a really cool mechanic that lets you do stuff uh, in later turns for less mana. Yeah, uh, you, can, you pay something's uh, Suspend cost, which is generally cheaper than its full cost, and you exile it with a number of Suspend counters on it. Um, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, you remove a time counter. Um, and when all of them are gone, you pay it 
until you play it without paying its mana cost. Love it. And pass turn. Okay, untap, upkeep, draw. I'll play an underground C, and I'll tap it for a black and cast Thought Seize targeting you. Oh no. So I'll pay two life. There's a nice uh, life counter on spell table that you can use. Uh, and get a, take a look at your hand and make you discard a card. Aw. All right. We got a Wooded Foothills, a Grim Lava Mancer, Price of Progress, Rift Bolt, Bloodstained Mire, and a Mountain. Okay, I'm gonna take Price of Progress because against Aww. this deck, that is usually <laughs> um, a like six to eight mana damage spell. That's, that's the idea. <laughs> and thank you so much for the raid, Ryan McLean. It's good to see Woo! you here tonight. Thanks for sharing your community with me. And then uh, that's gonna be a pass turn for me off of that thought seize. That's a good one. All right, I'm gonna untap. For my upkeep, I'm going to remove the counter from Rift Bolt, and I'm going to cast it, targeting you. So three to the face. All right, I'm going to go down to 15. All right, and then I'm going to draw. And then I'm going to play uh, a Wooded Foothills. Okay. And I'm going to tap it, pay one life. And I'm search my library for a mountain. Put it in play. If you just joined, we're ball. playing Paper Legacy. This is Shardless Soul Tide versus Mono Red Burn. So this is the Legacy Lounge where we play Paper Magic all the time. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> Actually, getting to use this in paper is just wild. Uh, all right, I'm going to pay one for a Monastery Swift Spear. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm going to respond. Uh. <laughs> I'm going to Force of Will pitching a Force of Will. So that is countered, <laughs> and I lose one life. That's that's quite a flex, pitching a Force of Will to a Force of Will. <laughs> I mean, with the text that's on Monastery Swift Spear, the prowess, and I know how many instances, I mean, I don't actually know how many instances and sorcery you have in your deck, but I know in general how many instances and sorceries Vern deck has, and I'm scared. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Monastery Swift Spear gets countered, and with my other open mana, I'm going to cast Grim Lava Mancer. Okay, and we have some love in the chat for Grim Lava Mancer. Some, uh, Grim Lava Mancer is very cool. <laughs> yeah, burn classic. And I'm going to pass turn. Okay. I will untap, upkeep, and draw. I'll play a Bayou for the turn. And let's go ahead and drop... Oh, no. Narset, Parter of the Veils. I don't actually think she's that great against your deck. I apologize that she's the foreign version, but she enters with five loyalty. Uh, each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and activate her minus two to look at the top four cards of my library. I was I, just looking her up. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, I love the search bar on the side. Um, I can reveal a non-creature, non-land, and put it into my hand. Um, I'm going to reveal uh, another Thought Seize, and I'll put oh, the nice. rest on the bottom of my library in a random order. So that goes into my hand, cool. and I'm just going to pass it back to you. All right. I was going to say you could like, not get another Thought Seize. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to untap my mountains. I'm going to upkeep. I'm going to draw. I'm going to play uh, another mountain, three of them, and I'm going to pay one for a Lava Spike. Oh, nice. So that's three damage to my face. I will take it and go down to 11. Okay. One more for another Rift Bolt. Okay. Rift Bolt's coming back. 
And then that last red mana, I'm going to tap and exile two cards from my graveyard. And Grim Lava Mancer will do two more to you. Okay, so I'm I am exile. down to nine. Exile Wooded Foothills and Monastery Swift Spear. Exile them. And then I'll pass to you. Okay. Uh, cards in hand? One. Oh. <laughs> well, the chances of it being a spell I want to get rid of are, you know, like 50-50. It could be a land. Um, oh. You do have that Grim Lava Mancer out there and plenty of cards in your graveyard. Because it's your graveyard, right? Yes. Uh... Remove two cards in your graveyard from the game. Grim Lava Mancer deals okay. to damage your creature. Play. How many cards do you have in your graveyard right now? I have three. Okay, so it's only one, probably two more turns. It's two turns too many, I feel like. <laughs> All right. Well, the burn deck it is. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and hit Narset again before I cast anything, since I'm not totally thrilled about the cards in my hand. I'm going to reveal... A great card, Liliana's Triumph. Um, oh. It's an instant. Um, uh, it's going to my hand, but I'm probably going to cast it right now. I don't see why not. Um, where each opponent sacrifices uh, a creature. And if I control a Liliana, mm -hmm. there's a bonus, but. Um... <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. My app. Bless you. Excuse me. Uh, my app pulled up the uh, Time Spiral Remastered version. It looks so cool. Nice. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cast Liliana's Triumph. Each opponent sacrifices uh, a creature. All right, I'm going to sacrifice Grim Lava Mancer. And then I'm going to cast Thought Seize and go down to seven, targeting you. Oh, it's a land. <laughs> okay. It was a chance. It's the other fetch. There was a but chance. Hey, it was either something really good or it was a land. Yeah, it could have been like, you know, Fire Blast or something crazy. Another mm -hmm. Price of Progress. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm going to just pass the turn to you. Uh, that, by the way, the Narset's so cool. I love the Japanese all over. Um, <gasps> Thank you. Our, oh, sorry. Out of order. Uh, untap. Upkeep, remove the counter from Rift Bolt. Be three to face. Uh, Unless there's a counter. Okay. Okay. No, I take three. I'm down to Woo. four. All right, and then draw. Mm -hmm. And wow, would you look at that? I'm going to pay one and I'm going to suspend another Rift Bolt. Okay. I swear there's more than just Rift Bolt in this deck. That's fine. It's a great card. It is. There are just so many more fun ones to show, but I'm just not drawing them. And are you hellbent now? No cards in hand? No cards in hand. Okay, just so... living by the top of the deck. <laughs> That's... I, I play, played Burn and Legacy for a good year or two. I still actually pull it out every now and then. I love Burn, um, but that's how it is. It's like, all right, you always get to that point where you're kind of top decking. Okay, I drew my card for the turn. And I'm going to see, this is my favorite part of this deck. I'm going to cast Shardless, Shardless Agent. Agent. And with uh, the Cascade trigger, we'll go off with Shardless Agent on the stack. So I'm going to reveal cards from my top until I hit one that's less. And so I'll go ahead and I'll cast Brainstorm. So I'll draw three. And I'll put two cards from my hand back on top of my library. Let's put, um, hmm, uh, I guess I want to put these two back. Is that what I want to do? It's a good choice. Yeah, that's the way. I don't know if they are. <laughs> this is the way. So brainstorm resolves. Um, now Shardless Agent resolves, and it, it doesn't have haste or anything. Narset's not really doing anything, so I'm just going to pass the turn back over to you. All right. I'm going to untap. I'm going to upkeep. You're never going to guess what this does. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to rift bolt to you for three. 
Yep, I'm gonna go to one. Uh oh. Let's see if this is the card that does it. I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna pay one. Just one? Just one. Okay. Fourth edition Korean black bordered lightning bolt. Okay, I have a response. <sighs> So if you're not familiar with Lightning Bolt, this is this intro to the game. Three damage. <laughs> Everyone should know that. Uh, one of the classics. <laughs> uh, oh, let me go back up there while you're holding it up. Oh, that is beautiful for him, Black Thank Border. You. I got it from one of my friends. <sighs> For those of you that don't know, the foreign black border ones are a later edition than the US ones, which is kind of cool. Um, fun fact. I'm going to cast Fluster Storm. Um, oh. So I will make three copies. Storm count is three with your Rift Bolt, your Lightning Bolt, and my Fluster Storm. And I will put all three copies of the Fluster Storm targeting your Lightning Bolt. Well, I only have two mana. Yeah, I know. So it's just barely <laughs> enough to that get is... you. <laughs> hmm. You did it. <laughs> All right. There's nothing I can do about that. I mean, I can, I can, I can pay the one for two of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the spell gets countered, and I somehow stay alive right you there. Managed to do it. You were holding on. <laughs> All right, past to you. Okay. Um, hey, the Commander Guru raiding with the party. What's up, Bab Bam? I hope your stream went well. You just missed a very dramatic fluster storm at one. I had three cool. copies of it. Let me give you a little shout out here. Uh huh. Boom. Fluster Storm did some work, so I'm gonna draw for my turn. I'm a little worried about you top decking a Swift Spear. Um, I'm also worried about you top decking a Price of Progress. Um, since I'm so scared and not like anywhere close to, uh, I'm just gonna. I guess I do have my creeping tar pit that I could always create. Let's and let's mobilize a creeping tar pit. let's go ahead and first though uh, brainstorm in my main phase and draw three. Put two cards back on top. Um, dang, I guess it's gonna be like that and. I'll go ahead and attack for two. Let's start getting the Shardless Agent beats in. All right, I'm gonna block with nothing. Okay. I'm gonna take two damage. And I'm gonna pass it back over to you. All right, let's see what we get. I'm gonna untap, now I'll keep interaction. I'm gonna draw. Is this it? It's the mountain. Oh! Ask me. <laughs> okay. It is um, the, the blessing and curse of top decking. I'm going to go you ahead and brainstorm on end step. Oh. This is so dumb. Oh, oh, perfect. Okay. I'm going to put these two cards back on top. And then untap, upkeep, draw. I will <laughs> tap three and cast... Uro, we've even got the uh, the sound from Arena coming in there. Um, because I did not escape it, I'll have to sacrifice it. But I'll put his enter the battlefield triggers on the stack, so I'll gain three life. I'll uh, draw a card, and I'll put a land card from my hand onto the battlefield. So I'm going to put a prismatic beast down there nice. and then it goes to the graveyard and That's good value. i'm still a little scared of the top deck monastery swift spear so i'm gonna pass this time oh no i won't die this time i'll hit i'll swing for two i'll swing for two i gained the life all right okay 
I've got nothing to untap. I got nothing to upkeep. I'm gonna draw. You know what? That's a card. Um, I'm gonna pay one and I'm gonna lob a spike. <gasps> that is a card. Uh, cause yeah, now I can no longer one. use my um prismatic vista. So I'm back down to one. And then that's it. Okay. This really is just living, I'm living by the seat. Uh, yeah, I'm top decking whatever, too at this whatever. point, honestly. <laughs> um, on top of keep draw. Okay, I guess. Um, I'll... Uh, actually, I think I can just... I'm not necessarily top decking now, because this with this Uro, that was super helpful. Because yeah. now I can go green, blue, green, blue, and actually escape Uro by excellent exiling one, two, three, four, uh, five cards from my graveyard. And then I'll get the trigger again, gain three, draw a card, and put a land from my hand onto the battlefield. I mean, if you draw a Price of Progress, I'm still just dead, though, to be honest. Yeah, Price, price of Progress is going to do a lot, and Fire Blast also will just shut. Yeah, <laughs> and then a, a wild card. I'll attack you for two. Ah! And the blockers? And, um... Pass to you. All right. I'm gonna untap this land. I'm gonna un yep, keep them on draw. Oh. I'm gonna keep that in my hand. And I'm gonna pass to you. Okay. I will untap. Definitely nothing spooky going on here. <laughs> keep draw. I'll. A land for the turn, a polluted delta. Oh wow! You know, fetches and... for days. <laughs> fetches for days. I'll tap for blue, black, green, and I'll cast another Narset. I'll let this ah! Narset die to the legendary rule. And I just have a refreshed, refreshed Narset. So I'll Narset. go ahead and. Minus her and look at four more, and I'll reveal a. Yeah, I could use one of those. <laughs> um. What do I want to do? I guess I'll reveal a force of will. And uh, put these. What am I resolving this from? Oh, yeah, on the bottom. Narset. Narset. Um, so those are on the bottom, and the Force of Will is in my hand, and I will attack for eight. Ow. And pass it over to you. Oh, jeez. All right, all right, come on. This has to be the turn. Come on. All right, so it was a mountain. Okay. Um... Pass? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dang, I'm so close. Come on. Yeah. Um, I will draw all attack for eight. Well, I can't do anything about that. Okay. <laughs> uh, on to game two. And that was yeah, only. I was holding a wooded foothills as a block. Only the force, the fluster storm, and the uro. If I had not had drawn those right then, or the brainstorm to get to the uro, yeah, it was very close. Was it was very close. It wasn't as close as like the fun thing about about burn is it's either run away or it's very close. Okay, but we'll take a look at my sideboard for you. Remember, that's a thing I can do. That is a thing that we could do. So, I'm there's, thinking... This is a very weird uh, assortment of... Definitely things. this. Definitely this. Oh, and definitely this as well. This is a good one for burn. 
Definitely. And... Oh. Yeah, you got some good ones, too. So, you know what? Some stuff that's not... Second one uh, of these. Not That's okay, I think that's good. I'm gonna do... So this is what we're putting in. I'm just gonna whisper all my secret plans. Okay. <laughs> Please do. Where are they? Two... Three and four. Of course, they're stuck together. I'm gonna take those out. And I'm gonna put in these. And I'm actually. This should be interesting. Well, good first game. Good first game. All right, let's shuffle these in. Okay, I'm actually just only going to take out one of these. And then both of these. And then I'll still have three of them in of these ones. Which I know chat said that you might take them out, but I'm leaving them in. There's there's spells I want to be able to play, but I'm leaving in. I took out a card. It's it, there's a card in the deck that I don't like, but it's in there because it's a burn staple. Yeah. I don't. I just don't like it. So when the first game ends up like, if the first game goes south, I just take them out and replace them with things that I like a lot more. So I'm not sure the card that you're talking about, but I know my bro is in the chat right now. And the person who helped me get into Legacy, besides my husband, is definitely my brother. And he played awesome. Vexing Burn, and that was the deck that I started playing. And it's called that because of Vexing Devil. Vexing Devil. Yeah, and so that's not a very common card, um, but it's kind of cool if you got it in your opening hand. A lot of times you play it, and they'd rather take four damage than... Yeah. Oh, it's very cool. Go against a 4-3. So I don't know if that's the card. It's maybe not... That one's not a typical one. <laughs> it's, it's atypical, but it's a fun one. I like Vexing Devil. Uh, I, I did like Browbeat, but then they made Risk Factor, and Risk Factor is just a better version of Browbeat. Yes, yeah, since you get the flashback of it. Or and, and, Jumpstart, and, what's it called? Uh, was it, uh, risk Factor lets you... It, it's basically Browbeat, Yeah. it's an instant... Yes. So you just do it at the end of your opponent's turn. It's like, well, are you going to take more damage or are you going to let me get more gas? And at the right moment, it can just be just devastating. Yeah, Risk Factor is really good. This reminds me a lot of I have a, a really janky uh, commander deck that I built. I built um, Oh my goodness. I can't look at the deck because, uh, in Japanese. Oh, Neheb the Eternal. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I built in Neheb the Eternal, and it's just, it's just Dragon's Approach. 27 copies of Dragon's Approach. <laughs> and then other things that generate mana off of casting instant or sorceries, and it just, if it, it, it sits there and does nothing for like three turns, and then it starts snowballing. It's really weird. <laughs> I love decks that have a little bit of spice. Yeah, sometimes your commander deck just has to be a little weird. All right. All right. So I'm guessing you'll go on the play. Yeah, I will go on the play this time. Sounds great. Well, good luck to you in game two. Game two time. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to keep. I feel like I shouldn't, but I am going to keep also. Well, let's see what happens. All right. I uh, got one of my sideboard cards. What's up? 
I should probably reset my life. Ah. Yeah, um, put your life back at 20 for sure. Yeah. That's very important. All right. Uh, nothing on tap, nothing upkeep, no draw. So I'm going to play Wooded Foothills. I'm going to crack it and take one damage. And I'm going to put down a mountain. Shuffle these up. Cut. And then pay that one mountain for your best friend, Monastery Swift Spear. Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! Resolves. <laughs> All right. And <laughs> I'm going to have her uh, attack for one damage. All right. I can't do anything about that haste. So I will take the one down to 19. I'll pass the turn to you. Okay, untap up, keep draw. Let's go ahead and play a verdant uh, catacomb. I'm gonna fetch down to 18 to get a swamp. I fear the price of progress. <laughs> I just wish they would print it in uh, like a modern legal set already, so modern bird decks can just. Uh, that. Yeah, actually, I would I would be a fan of seeing that as well. Uh, speaking of cards that are legal and modern, I'm gonna play Inquisition of Kozluk because I don't lose life then when I get to take stuff out of your hand, and your spells <laughs> are probably less than three. Uh, yeah. Uh, That's the benefit the about legacy, is you can inquisition into a lot more hands than modern. That's true. That's true. Alright, this is gonna be a fun hand to reveal. Oh! Okay. Huh. That's weird, but funny. Okay. Uh, Alright. Mountain, mountain, mountain. Okay. Chain lightning. Okay. And fire blast. Oh, well, I can't get rid of fire blast, ironically. So I'll go ahead and choose chain lightning. Uh, Fire Blast is cool. It has an alternate casting cost of sacrificing two mountains, which I feel like is usually the only way that I ever cast it. I love that you have uh -huh. the old art from Visions, too. Oh, and it's in Spanish? Spanish? Explosion de Fuoco! <laughs> That's dope. Right? Sometimes those cards are just fun to see. Yeah, you know the new, someone pointed out the new farewell card. You know what it is in Spanish. Uh, is it sayonara? Close, close. It's adios. Adios? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so simple, best, but um, I, we love it because we understand it. That's great. Um, is it, uh, Spanish uh, Sarkon the Mad is Sarkon El Loco. Yes, yes. Someone <laughs> Sarcano so Loco. I, um, I treasured that card. <laughs> um, so after the Inquisition, uh, I'm passing back over to you. All right, I'm gonna untap. I'm gonna upkeep. I'm gonna draw. Oh, uh, hmm, hmm. All right. Let's see what happens. All right. So I'm gonna play a mountain. I'm gonna pay one for Goblin Guide. Ooh, Goblin Guide is sweet and resolves. It's a gamble because it either helps you a lot or it helps you a lot, but it also does damage very quickly. He has haste and on the, whenever he attacks, the defending player reveals the top card of their library. If it's a land, they put it in their hand. It might be able to help you a lot. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Am I going to get a show off the top card of my deck? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to move to attack. And I'm going to attack with Monastery Swift Spear and Goblin Guy. Okay. So trigger. I will reveal the top card of my library. It's a polluted I'm delta. Fine. So I'll put it into okay. my hand. Woohoo. Okay. And then I have no blocks. So I'm going to... I'll declare no blocks. Okay. That's two from Goblin Guy and one from Swift Spear. Okay. Unless I really wanted to chuck my, my brand at... new mountains into the graveyard just Fif... to do a little more. Yeah, I doubt it. I, uh, I'm at 15 life now. And then I will pass to you. Okay. 
Um, I will untap, upkeep, draw. I will play an island. And I will tap two and play Umazawa's Jite. Oh no. Uh, this is one of the cards that I sideboarded in that I was really excited about when I got it in my opening hand. So sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, past turn. Now wishing I put in Smash to Smithereens. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna untap. I'm gonna upkeep on the draw. Play a mountain. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna pay one for Chain Lightning. Ooh, okay. Uh, that resolves. All right, I'll do three to you. Okay, I'm at 12. Uh, Monastery Swift Spirit gets one prowess treasure. Okay. And then I'm gonna move to attack. Okay, combat's I'm good. Attack with Goblin Guide and Swift Spear. I've got a trigger for the top of my library. It is a Baleful Strix, so I oh, don't put it into my hand. Yep. And I'll take the four. You know what? Let's have some fun. I'm going to pitch oh. my tapped mountain and one of my other mountains, and I'm going to fire blast. Okay. So Swift Spear gets one more tick of plus one plus one from Prowess, and then Fire Blast is four to you. So first I go down to eight from Fire Blast, mm -hmm. and then I'm taking five total, going down to three. Whew. Pass to you. Uh, okay, so I will untap, upkeep, and draw in my Baleful Strix that you knew is on the top of my library. It's a and, mystery. And uh, I'll play a Underground C and the Baleful Strix. Uh, uh, yes. Flying Death Touch. When it uh, enters the battlefield, I'll draw a card. Oh, good. And. It's too equipped to. A two cost to equip, so I can't quite equip it. So I'm just going to pass the turn back over to you and hope you don't top deck any burn spell. <laughs> what are the chances of that happening? Oh, um. Uh, probably going to a game three. Untap, upkeep, draw. Hmm. I mean, let's see what happens. I'm gonna play a mountain and then pay two for price of progress. <gasps> I have a response. I had a feeling you did. How many mana do you have open right now? Zero. I'm guessing it's a fluster storm. E yeah, I'm Maybe. going to tap one and cast fluster storm. I will. I have two copies of the uh, or one copy of the spell since fluster storm mm -hmm. is the second spell cast this turn. I will put both copies of the spell on price progress. Sounds about right. Uh, I got nothing to pay for it, so price of progress goes. And this is why they didn't reprint Storm. <laughs> <laughs> but I still do get the prowess trigger for casting price. Yep, it's on so cast. The spear still gets that. And then uh, I'm gonna move to attack. Okay. Uh, swing with everything. Let's see what happens. Um. So, what's Monastery Swift Spear's power and toughness right now? Uh, Monster Swift Spear is a 2-3. Okay. Um, so I'm definitely gonna... Oh, well, first I have to reveal it's a mm -hmm. true name nemesis, not oh, a no. land. Um, I'm gonna declare Baleful Strix as a blocker to Monastery Swift Spear because prowess is scary. It is a bit. What's the toughness on uh, Baleful Strix? It's a 1-1 one, one Flying Death All Touch. Right. Oh, so they kill each other? Yep, so they'll trade. Oh, no. You did so much good work, Swift Spear. And then I'll take two and go to one. <laughs> we're back. We're back <laughs> to nineteen to one again. <laughs> We've been here before. 
We might be here again. Um, and then I will pass to you. Okay, so untap, upkeep, draw the true name nemesis that was revealed. Um, play. Um, a, a tropical island and yeah this is the uh no that's not right yes yeah, this is right okay i'm gonna tap two and i'm gonna play another baleful strix ah. flying death touch draw a card um and now um i'm going to pass the turn uh oh that two open miles i don't like it I'm gonna two, two blue nobody's ever seen that before mm. <laughs> Let's do... I'm not, you know what? Um, hmm. I'm going to move to attack. Okay. I'm going to attack with Goblin Guy. Trigger. I will reveal a Liliosmus ah, triumph, oh no. not a land. Not and a land. I will declare Baleful Strix as a blocker to Goblin Guide. Okay, and they'll kill each other. Okay. And then I will pass to you. Okay, I will untap, <laughs> upkeep, draw the Liliana's triumph, which is revealed. Oh, I should have done that. That's okay. No, that's fine. Oh well. We're just gonna do this instead. Uh oh. Um. True name Nemesis is cool, but I'd, Very cool. I'd rather cast Shardless Agent, Trigger hey. Cascade. Uh, woo, woo, woo. So I'm going to, I'm going to brainstorm, brainstorm off of it. Again. That's what I got last time. <laughs> This is all very familiar. This, this, it's like we've done deja vu, this exact same thing before. So Brainstorm will resolve with the Shardless Agent on the stack. I'll draw three cards, putting them into my hand, and put two back on top. It's going to be these two. Brainstorm resolves. Um, Shardless Agent resolves. And... We're, we're here again. I'm going to pass it back to you. Uh, during your end step. Price? <gasps> I have a response. I have a response. Ah, good, 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 good. Ah! I was trying to go to your response. Uh, let me put up the price of progress while I'm doing this. This is, of course, very deadly to me. It would be currently dealing four damage to me since I have two basics. Uh, I'm going to tap one, and I'm going to brainstorm in response gonna, uh, uh, huh. that's okay that's good that's good uh, so i draw three oh! force of will. i put these two cards back on top and there was the third card down it was in fact a force of will so i'm gonna put these two cards back on top and i'm going brainstorms in my graveyard I'm, I'm gonna force of will pitching uh, yes. Narset Transcendent. No, I, cause then I lose one life and I die. Okay, we can go to game two. <laughs> Very well played. Oh, that was <laughs> oh my gosh. And that is what happens when you play against Burn. Uh, so I will take the play on game three. Oh, that was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, what a great card, though. Both yeah. Forces of Will and Price of Progress. Okay. Yes. 
so Your logo great. is so cool, by the way. Thank you so much. My friend Shane Morris designed it for me. He's a cool dude who used to work for the music industry, but I met him actually before he was like up and up in that. And so he like, I don't know, I follow him on TikTok now. He's just a cool dude. He's really smart. I don't know, like worked for the Department of the Defense, like really smart, like talks politics. I don't know, I, t I can talk politics, but you know, I just don't know some of the things that some people might know. <laughs> Anyway, thank you. It's good to have good friends that, you know, have different talents. What's one of your favorite things to do besides playing Magic? Oh, oh boy. Uh, so aside from a multitude of hobbies, uh, for, I, I did work 10 years in the food industry, and for about six of those years, I worked as a sushi chef. Oh, nice! And I mm. just really, 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 really like to make Japanese food and study Japanese food. Like, study, like, authentic, real, like, legit. And, like, uh, like a lot of the history of it, too. It's a lot of stuff that we think of as, like, quintessentially Japanese has origins in things that are actually foreign. Um, yeah, what is your like favorite fish to eat? Ooh, 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 that's a tricky one. Mm. I really like a, like, very well done mackerel. You know, like, I have... done properly. Yeah, that's, um, a type of... Is that a type of tuna, or is that its own It's fish? a little shiny, or they're about... Is it big. white? Uh, it's, like, white and blue. Oh, okay, yeah, I think I've seen it before. I don't know if I've actually tried it before. They're a little on the fishier side, but if they're if they're done right, they're basically uh, salted and cured in mm. uh, vinegar for a bit, which sort of sort of cooks, sort of toughens the, uh, the outside of the uh, of the meat, and it kind of gives it this. It's not the, as fishy as you might uh, as, as you might like expect. Yeah, it's a really nice oily kind of meaty flavor to it. Cool. Um, I love unagi. That's eel oh, for those of so you that good. don't know. But yeah, I love a good unagi. It's the unagi sauce. I feel like if I could just put unagi sauce on any type <laughs> of fish, is that? But that's probably like blasphemous or something. I'm guessing. I mean, it depends. <clears throat> yeah. Well, what's fun is that it's, it's actually really easy to make unagi sauce at home. Uh, just one cookbook has like a super simple recipe. It's like soy sauce, sake, and sugar. Really? And just reduce it, and it, that's it. Really, I can I can reduce I can reduce. this just yeah. Just boil it down in a frying pan or something, right? I'll send you the link. To oh, the please do. It's that sounds great. I might try to do that some night. <laughs> I don't know. Go for it. Um, the place I used to work. I, I live in Portland, and I used to work at this um, this little chain called Bamboo Sushi, and we did our uh, our eel was we would do a naga, which is a sea eel. Uh-huh. Uh, unagi is fresh water. Okay. And, uh, the sea eel's a bit, um, it's a bit lighter in flavor. It has a really nice texture. And, um, we would also do the unagi sauce, uh, in-house. And we would use the bones from the unago to just kind of flavor it. Cool. It was really good. That sounds really good. <laughs> I, now I want to try, un you said unaga? Anago. Anago. That mm -hmm. sounds cool because it's just oh, it the same really type of um, animal, but in a different environment, right? Kind of. They're they're pretty similar. Uh, Anago are a little, I mean, they're a little smaller. Anagi tend to uh, Anagi tend to be bigger. Uh, so for those of you there's, who are just joining us, this is game three. Um, yeah, we do have Legacy going on right now. It's pretty awesome. We were just talking about um, some sushi because Gavini has some experience there, which I think is awesome. I freaking love sushi. Like, I'm definitely, some people, you know, don't like fish or are allergic and I just feel bad because I'm like, oh, there's like yeah. so many things on that menu that are just amazing. And there's so many good things in sushi that aren't even fish. Like tamago, the omelet. It's delicious and very uh, beginner friendly. I'm all getting down to six, by the way. All right, I'm gonna keep. I hate, I hated a one land hand. I was not here for it. One thing that is nice about playing burn, like if you get a two land hand, you don't really care because everything is super low to the ground. Okay, I'm gonna keep and I'm gonna put 
this card on the bottom. And then it's my turn, huh? Yeah, it is. Oh, we should reset. Oh, yeah. Let's, I guess I don't want to start at zero life. <laughs> that would make her a very short game. Yeah, congrats! You won! <laughs> Uh, going into game three here on the Legacy Lounge, and I'm going to start it off, I'm old to six, but I'm going to play Verdant Catacombs, and nice. go to 19, fetch it for a Swamp. Good old Swamps. Yep, because I did in fact die to Price of Progress, or <laughs> countering Price of Progress. And I'm going to tap it, and let's see. Thought sees you. I will lose two oh, no. life, and yeah, I want to see what's in there and get rid of them. I have a feeling I know which one you're gonna pick. A monastery swift spear, if it's in there, probably. Or uh, price of progress, no. if it's in there. Price of progress. <laughs> okay, price of progress. I'll take that one. <laughs> Easy, I had a especially <laughs> since um, yeah, yeah. I was just talking about it. Two mountains, a bloodstained mire, a riftbolt, goblin guide, and fire blast. Okay, sounds good. Go ahead. All right, thank you. I'm tap that to draw. I'm gonna play a mountain, and I'm gonna play goblin guide for one. Okay, goblin right. guide resolves. <laughs> All right, goblin guide's gonna attack. On Please. attack trigger, I will reveal a hymn to Torok on top of my library. Oh, oh, oh. So what about you? What do you like to do outside of magic? Um, well, I love to cosplay, and that all comes from my dance background. Um, so before I ever got into magic, I was big into cosplay. Also, I'm at 16 from the Goblin Guide. Um, and yeah, I sewed costumes for my dance outfits, so that's kind of where then with magic, it was kind of natural just to, to do that as well. I'm gonna that's fetch. So cool. And I also, I enjoy drinking wine. I, out of all of my friends, my friends are like, Sinead knows like the notes and the taste. And they're like, ask Sinead, she knows. And I don't know everything, but I like to think I know a few things. That's really cool. Is actually that what I want to get? Uh, actually, I'm going to get a different one. I want to buy you. Nice. I'll buy you good. Uh, so one day, one day I'll have a duel. I'll True duel. tap two and I'll cast that hymn to Torok. So uh, target player discards two cards at random oh, no. in their hand. All right, I'm just gonna shuffle my hand up. Oh, yeah, I'm big on. into red wine, not as much in white. And I just started recently drinking some sake um, when I was in Seattle for oh. e CCC, I had Emerald City, I had, we went to the sake house, so I had to have sake at a sake house. That's so cool. Oh, I love sake. Yeah, so I'm getting into it. Awesome. It's, it's, uh, delicious, deceptively strong, and delightful. I actually did, um, at one of the places I used to work, um, uh, I got the chance to do a sake sommelier course. Oh, cool. It was a short one, but it was, uh, it was really fun and really informative. Like learning how it's made and all that. Nice. All right, so your hem got both of the mountains out of it. All hand. right, I'm gonna pass it back to you then. All right, I'm gonna untap. I'm gonna upkeep. I'm gonna draw. Let's Cat cameo. <laughs> all right. Uh, Bloodstained mire. I'm gonna crack it for a mountain. Oh, I'm one near the bottom. There we go. A lot of the cards in this deck I got from, there's a, a friend that I worked with uh, that I helped move, and after I helped him move, he was like, hey, you play Magic, here, you can have my box of cards. And um, I was like, cool, thanks, man. I was looking through it, and there's, you know, a handful of lightning bolts, a bunch of fetches. All of the fetches in this deck came from that, and most of the, uh, the, the mountains. Oh, hello. <laughs> really a cat cameo. What's your cat's name again? His name is George. We have another George. cat. She is uh, in our room sleeping. Uh, we got him uh, in June. He's just a little baby. Nice. He's so pretty. George. 
<laughs> Hello, George! Hello. All right, I'm him off again. <laughs> there he goes. Okay, so, mountain has been fetched, deck is shuffled. All right, um, one, goblin guide. Does he resolve? Uh, goblin guide resolves. Goblin right. guide is good. We got two um, goblin guides now. The two are better than one for possibly for me, possibly for you. It all depends. Um, my second mountain, I'm gonna pay one red to suspend rift bolt. Okay. And then I'm um, gonna move to attack. Yeah. Uh, with both goblin guides. Okay, so it triggers and there's a land, so I get to put it into my hand. And then the other one uh, triggers second. and it's Baleful Strix. <laughs> So. I was I was gonna I was worried that it was gonna be another land, <laughs> and I'd be sitting here going like I'm doing four damage. But, but I am going down to eleven, so there's That's that. Right. Um, and then past you. Okay, and I know that there's seven represented on the table for next turn. Draw. I mean, I guess I do have my baleful strix. How many cards do you have in your hand? I have one. Oh, okay. Um, I'll play a. Tropical Mountain, and let's go ahead and oh, I was supposed to hold one for the Bloodstained Mire. Yeah, lose your life. Yeah, I've done. I've done no damage to you. <laughs> um, I'm gonna play Baleful Strix, Flying Death Touch. When it enters the battlefield, I will draw a card. Uh, so um, and I should have tapped differently. I will pass the turn. Interesting. Um, oh wow. I couldn't have tapped oh, wow. differently. I needed the blue. Okay, I'm not being so bad at myself. Mm. I'm gonna hold off. Alright, I'm gonna untap. I'm gonna draw. Uh, oh, sorry. Upkeep. Uh, counter is off. Rift bolt. Rift bolt to. Let's rift bolt your Strix. Okay, my Strix is rift bolted. Hooray! Okay, and then I already drew my card. Let's pay one for chain lightning. Okay, uh, targeting me. Yep. I'm down at eight. And then I'm gonna move to attack. Okay. With both goblin guides. I have no blocks. To get no effects. Pesky. Yeah, I have to get that pesky Strix out of there. Okay, so I'm down to four. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, um, I guess it, the, I, triggers. the triggers. Yeah, uh, that happens before damage, technically. So I've yes. got the so island. One will go into play, and then the second one. Oh, forest! I get another <laughs> basics too. <laughs> I like that. These goblin guys are doing. They're just giving everything. <laughs> okay, I'm scared though. Good luck, cat. Uh, no, I showed you my hand. I showed stream my hand because I thought I was about to die to fire blast. So I was scared because I was like, that's why I was showing chat my hand. Um, what else now? My turn? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, untap, upkeep, draw. And chat's asking, is burn a hard matchup? Um, I feel like it's pretty grindy. I feel like it's pretty 50-50 for this matchup. I don't feel like it's... Comp this is a fair deck, and burn's a fair deck, right? Yeah. So Burn is not... Like, unless burn just gets the perfect hand, it does take a little work to get it to where it needs to be. And I like this matchup, though. Like, I would like... To, I'd love to play again, and I'd love to see... Your sneak and show deck just absolutely trash this. Okay, and so <laughs> here's I'll have to invite you back on the stream again. That'd be really um, fun. Um, I have to play um a land for the turn. It's gonna be a forest. That is such a 
Is it going to be a forest? Yeah. And then I'm going to tap these for... Oh, that's why it needs to be... Dang. No, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. No, it needs to be... Let me think about how I tap my stupid mana. Stupid mana. It's one of the great questions in magic. How do I tap my stupid mana? <laughs> uh, okay, well, I definitely will tap those. And then I do... I can't. I can't. I can. I can. Okay. <laughs> like that. I'm going to tap it like that. I'm going to cast Uro... Can Nature's Wrath. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh no. Can I respond and pitch my mountains and cast Fire Blast? You can. It hasn't entered the battlefield yet. I'm ca I'm casting Uro. So you can respond to it. And then with your Fire Blast on the stack. Uh, of course. Of course it will. Um... No, I, oh, okay, I have to, okay, I have to talk through something because this is okay. freaking crazy. So, okay, I, did I know you had the fire blast? I did, huh? You did. I did. It was uh, when you played, um, Thoughtseize. I guess I could have planned for that, but honestly, I was kind of stuck either way. So the reason why I was fidgeting over my mana so much is because I, of course, have, um, Assassin's Trophy and Liliana's ooh, Triumph ooh. in hand, so I could at least take care of one of the Goblin Guides to get it down. But there yeah. was no way I could get double black to him because the other land that I have in play is an island. Oh. But I played the forest first, not really thinking about... I didn't think it mattered because one, I would only have one land anyway to play Uro to get the extra land into play. But if I would have played the island, then I could yeah, have fluster stormed it. But if I would have fluster stormed it, I would have. I guess I would have gained the three life and then gone down to three. I'm curious, what's on the top deck of your top of your library? Uh, is it is a burn spell? So I would have died anyway because. Well, you would have suspended it. Do you have any mana left? Uh, no, I have no land. <sighs> So it, it definitely, I should have played the island. This is my favorite thing of Legacy because you can see how I was making the decision to, in, in a good sense, to use the Assassin's yeah. Trophy. That but, was a good plan. But I should have remembered, in hindsight, I should have remembered that you had the Fire Blast and I should have done this to, so that way I could still gain the life even if I didn't get to remove one of your things and make you do that. So, but that was, I love the Legacy Lounge because this is where people get to see the beauty of Legacy. This is why I freaking love Legacy, why I consider it the most fabulous format. It so, was really fun. Congratulations, <laughs> Gavin E. Yeah, Trading Post. Thank um, you so much for having me.